Hey there guys. Today's video, I'm going to be fixing my Wi-Fi problem. I've recently moved down into this new bedroom in the basement of my house and the Wi-Fi is bad. Running that speed test on my MacBook actually made it look better, but if I ran that same speed test on my phone, I believe because the phone does not have quite as strong of Wi-Fi connectivity as the MacBook does, it will struggle more. And even on there, I don't completely trust that because I find that the Wi-Fi can be spotty down here in the basement. So he we're here to fix that today, but we're also gonna be just improving the Wi-Fi in general in a few places in the house. We are also going to be terminating a jack under here because I am planning to build a PC pretty quick here soon and I would much prefer to have a hardwired connection. Which luckily we have not one, but two data connections that could possibly be made in this room. We also even have a coax ran here. That's the easy part. First, we have some other things that need to get done that aren't quite already installed. Now, let me show you what my plan is. First, we've got to head out to the garage. So here is the plan. I'm not only going to be installing a hardwired jack in my new room to plug in my PC that I hope to build, but I also need to improve the Wi-Fi situation. Now my longtime loyal viewers would remember a while back I installed a ubiquity access point above the ceiling in here. Now a lot of you wouldn't have seen that because no one watched that video and maybe no one will watch this one either. I don't know. But I can take a stool here. When I ran the data out to this building, I installed the Wi-Fi access point up here. There it is. I installed this ubiquity access point up here a few years ago. And if I can take it down. I installed this guy right here. This is a Unify UAP AC light. Now, some of my more techie viewers will know exactly what I'm showing you guys as far as this sort of stuff. I know how to run the wires there and terminate the wires. And beyond that, it is magic. But I figured some of you might want to see this. So this is the one that's installed in this garage. I don't think it was the fastest model or anything special, but it gets the job done for me. Almost every YouTube video published in the last two or three years has been uploaded using this access point. One of the reasons I'm showing you guys this access point is to let you know that it's ubiquity because I obviously want to continue with ubiquity because my hope is to have one network that you can move around the building and use that same network and not have to log into other ones. I at one point referred to it as a mesh network, but apparently that's not the proper terminology as that would be done wirelessly. Apparently the word that I'm looking for is a roaming network, I believe. The main takeaway is that it is a ubiquity access point. Good night. These ones I've got here, I actually think are better than the one installed in here, which is perfectly fine because this one has done a great job as it is and has been plenty good enough for me in this sort of small building. It's uploaded many YouTube videos, watched many hours of YouTube videos and watched many hours of Netflix and movies, etc. So I don't know anything about these. You guys will. Hopefully they're good. Uh, I'm sure you guys will let me know. These guys were exactly free. So can't really complain, but they're ubiquity, so they match my other equipment. I will take the back off of this guy here. It's a little tricky one-handed, but... This is a Unify APACLR. I think the LR stands for long range, but I could be wrong. So I've got two of these, which I'm going to install one on each floor of my house. And I do also have these PoE injectors. That is what I'm using up in that one because this is a non-PoE switch. However, for the house, I need to buy a new switch anyways because I'm out of ports on the back of the router, modem, whatever that is. 
I am out of port, so I need a switch anyways. So for the cost, I bought a PoE switch. So this is the current setup behind here. We have one of these extender things. I don't think it works very well. And this is all we've got for ports right here. You can see we do not have any more. This one is in fact not being used. This went to my old bedroom, so that can unplug from there. And you can see that is going to computer. And this one is what currently feeds the garage. So that comes off of a port there. This is another port going to this guy, which it is gonna stay here for now, but I think it will go eventually. So I think for the upstairs ubiquity access point, I'm just gonna leave it sitting up here, whatever it's done. I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference, but our downstairs one, as well as the data going to that one spot in my new bedroom, I need to take up here from downstairs. So we need to cut in a LV1 ring and put in a four port switch, or sorry, a four port plate and take up our wires. I decided to put in a four port just for things to get added down the road. I'm going to get our downstairs access point centered in the house. So I think I'll get it sort of into this closet area. So I'm going to pull my wire over through here, down this uh, down this return air, and then we have a void in that wall to get it down and up. Going to be pulling cat six. So I'm going to tie into this pull string over here in this storage room where I can then push it underneath that duct and that goes over to the closet we were just looking at. So this is our pull string and we're gonna tie onto that. And I'm going to pull a new pull string along with it here so that when we pull this one out, we'll still have one in here. Okay, I'm gonna pull that through now. Now our new cable here that we've pulled in is going to follow this guy here as well as these two white ones back. They go over the furnace ducts and then they go over here and you can see them going down that way, down there. So we're going to be continuing the path of those. So we're gonna put some fish sticks together to get down the wall over there. Okay, we'll start with that and we're gonna toss that over top of the furnace there is our fish stick over here at the furnace end okay we're all taped on here I'll just pull some through here to make sure it's not gonna get damaged and afterwards, once this is pulled through, we will staple it up top there with the other stuff better. Okay, I guess that's how much we left ourselves. 
which is plenty. So this is our line that's going to be for our new access point. And I think this white one will be our, our room over there, I believe. And then one of the blues goes to the other side of the, the room, and then one of the other blues ends in that furnace room, I think intended to be able to be pulled out for that TV. I want to drill a hole up through the floor, 22 inches out from this chimney, which puts us right along there. But I think, yeah, that's fine. We want to be a little bit away from the power. I apologize if I do a bad job filming this. This is a very awkward position that I am standing in here to try and film and do this at the same time. So yes, that is a white cable we have down under there. Okay, so we went 22 over, which I'd like to take this one off the wall here so I can feel if we've got anything between there. I think we'll just go somewhere in here 12 and a quarter to the bottom or 16 and a quarter to the top i keep a card like this is just an access control card in my pouch because they are the right size that you want to cut out we might hit something there so i'm going to start cutting from that side and work my way that way I do have Lumex in the wall here, so I'm not going to be too crazy. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to shove a fish stick up from the bottom. We can put this guy back too. As I said, this gray one goes to my old room and this um, direct burial rated stuff is what goes to the garage. So this can go back here. So now up here, I gotta try and grab that fish stick. Okay, I didn't have good luck with this, but these sometimes like to go towards the back. So I'm hoping I can use a fish tape and try and push it towards the front more. The fish tape is now up here and I have a pull string added. So I'm going to pull it back out with the fish tape or with the, with the fish tape. And then we can use the fish, the line to uh, pull up on the, our cat five E and our six. Hey. What are you making all that noise? Hey. What are you doing? So I've got these taped on to our pull string here now. I also taped another pull string on, that way we can pull one in the future. And instead of just pulling the two up we need, I'm going to pull all four up. Our new Cat 6, the one Cat 5 that ends in the furnace room, and or actually 5E, and the other 5E that goes to the bedroom that I'm not going to be using, and the white 5E that I'm going to terminate in the bedroom. 
it's easier just to pull them all up now because i mean where else are they going to go they're all going to have to go up there one day anyways so i'm going to pull them all up the only thing i left is the coax because it's thicker so it's more difficult to work with and i don't think it's going to be used but i always could pull it up with the pull string i'm going to leave anyway Okay, there they all are. So to make sure this pull string doesn't get lost in the wall, I've tied it on to one of the little flip out things from the LV1 ring. This is our Cat 6, so I'm not going to pull much extra of that because it'll just keep coming because there's so much in there. These though, we can all pull until they stop. There's quite a bit of these. Well, maybe. We'll see. These are stapled, so we're just pulling the slack out. And that one's still coming. Okay. That should be it for all of those. Okay, there you go. Those guys are all pulled into there and then this guy is why i didn't keep pulling because you can see there's a lot so we are going to i'm going to just probably zip tie it to some of those staples as far back as we can and i'm going to tie this pull string onto something here okay so we've got way extra of these so i'm just going to cut them back right here and the blues I know I don't need those today. So I'm gonna tuck these up in the wall here. And I'm gonna use the blue today as well as, well, our new blue, I should say, and this white are what we are gonna to terminate today. But before I start terminating, I'm going to throw some zip ties on here and attach it to all of the staples that are already in place to get it all strapped up and supported properly. We've got some here that can be pulled back, but otherwise it is all strapped. And that is strapped like that all the way along. So some of this can be pulled back. There you go. And there you go, it's all pulled up tight now. Okay, so I'm going to terminate our data jacks here. So I will start with this guy. This is our cat six, which will be our access point. And the jacks I'm gonna be using is all column scope stuff. You can also use other brands that's just what I've got here and what I'm going to be using you know it's cat 6 when it's got this piece of plastic in the middle cat 6a actually has like an x-shaped plastic and I've never worked with anything newer a I know there's newer ones now up to eight I believe so we're going to straighten all these guys out and we are going to punch this down a you can do a or b it does not matter as long as it's the same on each end Okay, so here's our jack, and before I forget, put this guy down your wire, because I think almost everyone's forgotten this at some point. I've done it lots, and that's really annoying, because then you have to decide if you want to pull apart what you've just terminated or just forget it. And then we've got our jack here. So there you can see you have style A on the top it is white, blue, blue, white, orange, orange. And then on the bottom we'll have white, green, green, and brown, white, brown. So we're gonna be doing A. White, blue, blue, and then our Orange guys over here.
orange, white, orange. Not going to chop them yet, just going to push them down in there. And then on the other side, we will have brown, brown, white. Might be able to get this a little closer actually. And then and then green, green, white. Then we can check that. Brown, brown, white, that's good. Green, green, white, that's good. And on the other side, we have blue, white, blue, that's good. And then orange, white, orange, that's good. So we can cut these all off now. I did use this special tool once at work that actually does it all at once. You put the jack in and then you print it down and it pushes them all in. I don't actually find it to be that much quicker though, because you just have to align them all at once. I mean, it's kind of cool, but I don't think it's actually that much better. So then this clicks in there and kind of keeps them all in place. So now I'm going to do our white cable here. This one is a 5E. Okay. Okay, double check, blue, white, blue. And that's why we double check, we got that reverse there. That was supposed to be orange, white. Orange. If I'm going left to right the way I'm looking at it. Okay, that side's all good. Brown, brown, white, green, green, white. That's all good. Okay, now we're going to put this plate on here. It's a little bit bigger. Now I went with a four plate right here that way because I've got those two other Cat 5 E's, they can be added after the fact. So we'll snap these in. We'll put these in the bottom here. And that will go in like that. Then I have two blanks to go in here. One. And that's two.
There we go. Now that's snapped in right. Okay, that has those two jacks up here. I will have to stick a, a toner in there and or something and figure out which is which and label them later. But for now, that's good. I've got quite a bit extra off of here. So we're going to cut that off. And now in here, I'm going to take this and push it through here. Okay, that might be enough to grab. Okay, I'm now going to terminate an RJ45 and don't mind the dryer making a bunch of noise, so, so sorry about that. Cut off some of the slack, but I'm still going to leave a little bit there. So we're gonna straighten these all out just like we did before. Okay, so the way you do this is you face the jack with this, the little locking nub down and then you do your colors. Now this is going to be for A again. So we want green, white, green, orange, white, blue, blue, white, orange, brown, white, brown. And then before we crimp it down, we'll ensure it comes out the other side still matches. Green, white, green. Orange, white, blue. Hard to tell what that is. Then blue, white, orange. Brown, white, brown. Okay, so this is ready to be terminated. We'll put this into the RJ45 and crimp it down. This one crimps this down the wire, but it doesn't actually cut the ends off. We have to do that ourselves on this one, which is kind of goofy, I don't like that one. Okay, there you have it. I'm going to plug this in to the bottom of our access point. There you go, that's plugged in. And this guy will mount up here somehow. Okay, now I'm just going to clean up this wire as we have a bunch of excess here. Okay, then the extra, I'm just going to tuck it up here into the ceiling. So there you go, there is our, oh now it's locked fine. There's our downstairs access point. There you have it. Now it's pretty central in the basement. I know it's in the closet, but whatever. Okay, this is going to be the data jack for my computer. This is under the desk, so if the light 
is a little bad. I apologize for that. This whole video has actually been in some of the most awkward places for me to try and film. You can see these are not wound nearly as tight as they are in Cat 6. I should be putting these on before I spread these all apart, but I don't know why I didn't. I'm not thinking here. Okay, and now a plate. Okay, there you have it. And for the access point here on the second floor, I'm just going to mount it up on the wall here behind the TV. I think it would work fine. I don't really feel like fishing it through the attic and all because I don't think there'd be much benefit because the modem was here before and it worked fine as far as Wi-Fi on this floor. I think that's a stud right there. That definitely was. And I have this little Cat 6 patch cord. It's a little five footer. So since we're gonna get rid of the Wi-Fi booster, we will have two free ports right out of this. However, that isn't enough because we have two new access points plus the data jack to my computer. That will be in the room. I've now got our PoE switch here that I'm going to put behind that TV. That's going to provide the PoE power. That's gonna provide the connection to both access points This is just a small little one, but it's all I need. Looks like we've got little feet that we can stick on the bottom of this too, which I think we will do. So I'm gonna take a patch cord over from here. I think we can go into this fifth port on this guy. I need some longer patch cords to go to here though, so I'm gonna change some of them out because I've got these short three foot ones, so I just swapped this longer one for this one here that didn't need the longer one, and I'm going to probably do the same for this one here that we just put in because this doesn't need to be this longer one.
So then this PoE switch is going to need its power, obviously. So we'll put that there. And then this guy can just kind of stay up there, but I'm going to want it on UPS power. That way it will still go if the power is out. So we'll put that into one on the UPS down here. So I think these ones here are the two PoE ones. Obviously this one is because I can see it goes to this access point that is lit up. And then this one is, so this one in the middle here goes to this jack. So I'm guessing that one is the jack for the computer. And this one is our downstairs access point. You can see there's no activity on them because they're not set up yet, but So these access points won't function until they are actually set up through the Unify program, but I can check that the light is on, which this one is. I can look at the downstairs one. Which you can see that also does have a light on it. I've put some Velcro on there so that actually gives us some more weight so it will stay there on top of this UPS and I've done up the cord there so that will, that's solid enough, it's not going to fall off. And this Wi-Fi booster here, this will go away once I have the Ubiquiti network set up because I will abandon the Wi-Fi coming from this and the Wi-Fi coming from the router there and we will only use the Ubiquiti. When I say abandon, I just mean abandon for your personal mobile devices. I do still have some fixed things such as some smart lighting and stuff that is already connected to the old network and it works fine off it. It doesn't need the highest speeds. That is perfectly fine to stay on there. Now it's actually like a month later after that last clip and everything is now all set up and a lot of you are gonna be really upset with me for not showing the setup process, but I did it because I don't know what I'm doing. I was actually very hesitant to make this video at all. That's why this clip is filmed a month after because I did the last of it. And it's just like, everyone's just gonna crap on me for this. Like I'm not an expert on Wi-Fi, and whenever I talk on something I don't know, I have a lot of people that are really upset with me for doing it and like to really talk down of me because I don't know the, the, the most of it. So I'm kind of hesitant to do these sort of videos, but whatever, I guess I'll do it and I'll just uh, bite the bullet on this one. So it was set up through a the Unify controller program that was on a PC. It was actually a PC that I had in another house, so I had to go get it, bring it back here because I needed to do it on that same PC. That way I could add it to that network that is titled the name of the one in the garage because otherwise if I couldn't have done that, I would have had to reset that one, which would have mean I had to reset every device that was connected to that one in the garage, which was quite a bit. The generator controller, like 13 different security cameras, um, and two smart Govi lighting strips, three outdoor um, Leviton smart switches, the garage door, garage door opener, the Samsung heat pump, um, and more. It's just that sort of stuff. There would have been a lot to try and reconnect. And I didn't want to do it. So the whole network, the whole, every Ubiquiti access point now shares the network name of that one in the garage. They're all under um, 518, um, access points or garage access points so the ones in the house are also titled garage access points even though they're not so that's just the network name because otherwise i would have had to reset everything i apologize for the noise down here the laundry machine dryer is still going it's really frustrating every time i try and film it's going but there is that access point there i'll show the upstairs one so yeah guys that's where we're at all the wi-fi is working i can show you the speeds we're getting um it is much better than it was getting around between 200 and 280. I'm honestly not sure how much this test tells you 
because it seems to vary. Like I've seen it go as low as like 150 and I've seen it go as high as like 280. But the Wi-Fi definitely does seem to work much better. I've had no is issues with it since. I do find that sometimes the speed will be affected by where your, uh, which access point it connects to because sometimes I'll be downstairs but I was just upstairs and it didn't jump over to the downstairs one that it stayed on whichever one. Like I bet if I did the test again, it could be completely different. We'll see. So anyways, I don't have a lot of knowledge or information on this and I'm prepared to get asked a lot in the comments and I won't have an answer to a lot of it because this isn't something I have much knowledge on. I uh, set it up and I had my dad help me with um, the actual programming, setting up of them, enrolling them sort of thing, because uh, I'm not an IT person, so I'm, it's not, not my uh, subject of expertise, but anyways, it's working a lot better now. So that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you do have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those down below. Chances are I won't have an answer to a lot of them because I don't know. And uh, you know what? People are gonna crap on me if they want, so whatever, I'll take it. Anyways, it's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching.